This is Rudston, six and a half miles outside of Bridlington, East Yorkshire. And just through here is quite a remarkable object. That huge stone there is the largest standing stone in England. Because I was in the area, I thought I'd come have a look at it. Now I've been aware of this monolith all my childhood, really. Since the age of 10, I've known it's here and I've come and visited it. One late night, we all came here, parked up there, listened to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, and got absolutely terrified and scarpered because it's kind of odd, this thing. In the country, the countryside, living a hundred All these, look at these little lines and marks. Living a thousand years. What made them? Who made them? When I was at school here in Bridlington, um, for some reason I was getting into quite old music like the Beatles and Pink Floyd and it was all old music. I was, I, was, I was always hanging out with the older kids. And once we, one of the older kids had a car, a ladder, and he drove here. And it was like half past 11 at night. And he put on his uh, cassette deck or probably a CD of um, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. We sat there with it on really loud <laughs> next to the monolith. and. Genuinely, genuinely one of the scariest experiences I've ever uh, had in my life. <laughs> Nothing happened. It was just scary. So we left after like the first song. I have to come back here and go in the church to see the amazing organ that they have in there. I'd like to do that. Uh, there's an exhibition inside. There's the monolith. Oh, the top corner actually has a Roman sarcophagus and an outer stone. Hadn't noticed that. And a cyst. But if only I'd known. at Rudston stands about 25 feet and the next highest in England possibly the UK I'm not sure is this one uh, this is one of three I can only see two I'll check to see if I can find out where the third one is but this one is 22.5 feet high and it's here in North Yorkshire near a little town called Butterbridge and these are known as the devil's arrows now I am uh, no expert that's <laughs> anyone will be able to contest immediately upon watching this video but the story is that the devil rat stood on a hill nearby and fired his arrows and they landed here but I think a better story and you got to bear in mind History is just stories told by people who won. But I think a better story is that the devil fired the arrows from hell up. And this is what shot through the surface of the earth. He almost managed it, but he failed because the devil never wins. I should probably flag at this point. I'm not even remotely religious. I am just messing about. But these kind of sit in the middle of this field. It's like a farmer's field, just on the outskirts of a town. You see some modern build houses over here. And then over here, the countryside. There is the uh, A1, uh, just the other side of those trees. So you can probably hear the traffic in the background, I'm not sure. And these things, um, how old are they, I wonder? I mean, how old is the rock? But to be shaped like this, if they were shaped, I'm guessing they were. You can see that it has 
a, and I'm pointing up to the sun here, so I'll just go around the other side. So bet that's a better view now. And you can see from the side here that there are these ruts or uh, I don't know, fissures, I would guess, going down the center, which would make it a lot easier to cut out and shape, I would have thought. But it, it, it doesn't look like a particularly strong or difficult stone to carve away at. And it is amazing that it's stood, you know, the test of time as it has. You know, how many people have stood here over the centuries? I wondered, kind of thing, you know, we're wondering now. Little spiders in the crevices there, look. It is so cool. I just love these things. As we come around this side, you can see the other one is over there in the distance. I'll sort of venture across it, being careful not to damage this crops. So treading on the same spot the farmer has sort of used for the tractor. I'll just step across carefully here. Try and be respectful. In a way, it's rather unfortunate that I've come at this time of the day because obviously that means the sun is directly in the direction I want to film and I become pretty much a silhouette. But if we look at this one here, it's, it's kind of like fatter than that one, but a lot shorter. And looking at it, you wonder if it was probably the same height originally, if not higher. The devil's arrows. Again, on this, you can very clearly see the lines in the stone, the natural crevice or fissure of the stone, which you can imagine would, if you placed the hammer blow in just the right spot and wedged wood into it and wedged it down and down, it wouldn't take long before that a slab would slide off there. You can also see clearer on this one than the other one, I think, these uh, holes, pits, which you never know what they are, but the, um, the sort of romantic in me wonders if that was um, bullet shots, possibly from the war, but it could just be hammer blows, people throwing stones at it. It almost looks like here, somebody's tried to set fire to it. It's all black, but I think this is just natural. I better not, I better be careful touching it to be honest. You never know. But there, there are the ruts there, really clearly visible. So I'm left kind of wondering, you know, where's number three? We've got one, two, the book says three. Originally, when I say the book, I mean Wikipedia. <laughs> Originally, uh, it's all citated on Wikipedia. People get very precious about, oh, you just check Wikipedia. I, I do check the citations too, and I probably should mention the citation rather than the Wikipedia, but Wikipedia is pretty much just a, an amalgamation of actual research. But number three, I'm going to go further down the path and see if it's in this field over here. They're, they're apparently supposed to be in line, so it should technically just be behind that tree over there. And... Uh, that's where it is, so if I can avoid getting my exposed legs stung by these nettles, I'll go into that other field and have a look. Let's see if we can find a natural gap in proceedings. Here we go. I've just got to be careful. I do have my shorts on today, so it's a belter of a day. And uh, nature definitely not wanting us to come through here. And now the nettles have gone. There's these things here, nettles and these things. It's okay, don't worry about me. And I'm looking at the field now. I can't really see anything in this field in line with the two stones. But let me keep walking down here a little bit and see if something pops up. If it's not down here, then there is another field, the other side of the road there which it could be in.
it's a nice day, why not go for a little walk? I am looking, I'm scouring the horizon. Such a nice day. The shade is perfect. And I know you can't see me very well, but at my age, these things are a blessing. Right, I can't see anything. Well, I can see things, obviously, I've got eyes and there's things there. But I can't see anything on the topic of what we're talking. I don't know why I bother with you a lot sometimes. Okay, I'm very hoitily walking down this across this field here. I'm I'm a bit hoity toity in my in my in my gait. I'm conscious of that. Like I own this field. I don't know where this has come from, but I'm quite enjoying being hoity toity in a field. <laughs> That's just my field. Good. I'm a morning stroll in my field. Hello! Nobody here, of course. Maybe that's why I'm hoity-toity. <laughs> I wonder if you can be just hoity. Or just toity. I'm not so hoity, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit toity. But, huh, maybe a bit more hoity than toity. I've never been accused of being just hoity before. Right, this is the bottom of the field. I can't see any stones. So I'm abandoning my search and I am going to cross here because it's nice and grassy. And I'm going to go back into this other field with the two standing stones in and head back because I don't feel I fully appreciated them. Whew. Whew. Don't worry about me, viewer. You continue doing it. Oh, there's nettles here everywhere. Look at me. Right, I'm going to try and go back into this original field. It looks like the nettles are down a bit. There's those two magnificent stones over there. Oh, okay. I'm here. Stop being a wuss. You're not a wuss. I am a wuss. You know, there's like these modern houses over here. Characterless cubes. And, uh, I don't know. I don't like them. I don't like that type of house. Uh, I'm not, I, I am criticizing the type of house, but I know that's a bit rude. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, it's just me, by the way. I'm not speaking on behalf of everybody ever, by the way. But that's just my opinion that that's the red brick is not my thing. It's something I probably will have one day. But if I can avoid it, I want something like a few hundred years old, really. <clears throat> All right, I'm zigzagging around here. But what I wanted to say was those modern houses there, I reckon, I reckon they'll come and go. And these stones, of course, will still be here. For many hundreds and thousands of years on from now, because in the UK, these are now national monuments, historic monuments. There's no, no government's going to come along and say, do you know what? Let's dig up the standing stones. We've had enough of them. We've seen them now. We get it. The stones, they're standing. That's not going to happen. There's no government going to start digging up national monuments because we love them so much. And these will be here for many thousands of years from now. And they won't. They'll get knocked down. And I, I bet there's, I hope they keep this, this field, you know, I don't know who owns it, but there must, there, there must be a, a law about you cannot build in that field. I mean, the fact that these houses are so close to the stones alone is kind of spoiling the experience of the stones. I've got to be honest with you. And it does not helped by that busy road in the background. Let's just stop and appreciate this thing for a little while. I mean, I do love them. That one in particular. You find that a lot of amazing things come on the back end of people having this quest for finding purpose in their lives, i.e., you know, religious belief, uh, something beyond 
the now, beyond reality, beyond our existence. What happens to us when we die and all that kind of thing. And these have to be related to that, right? They have to be related to some sort of worship, either of the sun or <clears throat> whatever it is that people believed. Some sort of spiritual connection. These kind of like helped that. I can get it. Because they're so weird. It's, they're just weird. It really must be in the ground quite deep. We know the one at Rudston is thought to be as much above ground as there is below ground. Imagine that is true of this thing. Look. Imagine this thing is also down in the ground for the same amount. I mean, that's a major task to dig that up. Well, that concludes my, my visit to some standing stones in North Yorkshire and East Yorkshire. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you found that interesting. By all means, feel free to do some research. I'll leave a couple of links in the description. If you liked what you've seen here and you want to know when I upload another video where I'm traveling around on my foot, on my bike, in my car, or when I'm behind the scenes filming documentaries uh, for television, feel free to uh, uh, get, hit the notification to get a notification every time I upload a video. Subscribe, obviously. Um, if you like the video, uh, YouTube, love you for that. And also, uh, if you've got any questions at all, if I've got anything wrong, if you know stuff that I don't know that you could share with the larger pack uh, of my subscribers, then please put something down in the comments and let me know. But for now, from me, it's goodbye. And thank you very much for watching and see you next time. I was just driving off. And I noticed this gentleman over here on the bike. Oh. It's huge, 22.5. The biggest one's in Rudston, which I was at the other day. Yeah, it's 25 feet, this is 22 and a half. Amazing. So here it is hidden amongst the trees, prehistoric monolith, millstone grit, probably transported here from the area of Knaresborough, 2,700 years BC. And look at it, hidden in the trees.